What's up everybody, my name is Akram Khaled, and in this episode, we're going to spend some time figuring out how we can use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create this amazing animation you see on the screen. The effect you see on the screen is inspired heavily by Cuberto, which is a creative agency that builds websites, applications, and does a lot of branding. This was taken from their homepage, and what happens is that when you hover on these different elements, such as the website, the apps, and the branding, it shows a quick highlight of some of their work. That's good. That's damn good. Now in our example, we aren't using videos or work that's coming from Cuberto. I went through dribble.com and found some of the best ones out there and I'll have those linked in the description so that we can give the lovely creators some credit. Before we kick this video off, I want to say that the editing style is a bit different. It's a bit more fast paced, catering to the users who don't want to spend too much time on a video. So let me know if you do like this style or my previous style where I kind of code um, in a live format talking and smacking away at my keyboard. I do believe I like this format a bit better, but go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know how you feel and if you would like to go back to the old format. We're going to give this format a bit of a try and we'll see how it goes. As always, take care of yourselves out there, have a wonderful day and stay safe. Go ahead and open up your terminal. If you haven't installed the dependencies, go ahead and install them through npm or yarn. In my case, I had already installed them, then run yarn dev. Go ahead and open up localhost 1234, and here we have our starter files. Nothing really crazy going on here. It's just simple HTML, CSS. So let's talk about the starter files real quick. We have the cache directory, which you don't need to worry too much about. We have the disk, which is the distributable folder, which where all of the build files go. Uh, whenever you need to host, that's where they'll reference. Then we have nxjs, which is going to be our main JavaScript file. And then we have the utilities.js, which contains certain functions that we'll reference while building the cursor.js, such as linear interpolation, get mouse position, as well as the get siblings. Node modules, node modules, and then we have our SAS folder, which contains our styles. We have style the SCSS, and then we are also breaking down the styles through components for the header, the hero, and when we build the cursor, we'll use a cursor in SAS. Next, we have our videos folder, which just contains apps.mp4, branding, and the websites mp4. And then finally, we have our index.html, which is sort of our main page entrance. We have the script for the index.js on the bottom, and at the top, we have a link to our SAS style sheet. Using parcel bundler, you'll reference it as a SAS style sheet and not CSS, and then they will handle the conversion for us. I've broken down this project into six steps. The first step is to build the HTML and CSS for our cursor. The second step is to add JavaScript to animate the cursor. Third step is to scale the media's cursor on hover. And a lot of this will make more sense as we start coding. The fourth step is to change the media for cursor depending on which item we hover on. Fifth step is to add the blend effect. And finally, the sixth step is to add a loading effect to the body to prevent flashing. We're going to kick things off with step one, which is building the HTML and the CSS for the cursor. Go ahead and add a comment for our cursor. Then we're going to add a div with the class name of cursor. And then inside the cursor div, we're going to add a div with a cursor media. And then we're going to drop our video. Now, this video is going to be one of the three videos from our videos folder. So right now you see we are displaying the websites.mp4. We've got the certain attributes displayed, such as autoplay, loop, muted, and having an ID passed in. I'll go ahead and paste in two other videos, which is the apps and the branding video. So again, we have our cursor and then inside the cursor, we have our cursor media and inside the cursor media, we have three videos, which we are referencing from our videos folder. Now it's time to style the cursor. Go ahead and create a new file inside the components folder called cursor.scss. We are using SAS, but we're using the SCSS syntax or format. So I'll just keep saying SAS. And then jump to your style SAS and make sure you import the cursor SAS file. Inside the cursor SAS, we're going to go ahead and add the cursor class with the position fixed, top zero pixels, left zero pixels. And then the Z index will be set to 10. Make sure you add a contain with layout, style, and size. Our pointer events are going to be set to none. Then we're going to add a before pseudo element with content sent to quotations and position absolute, followed by a top and a left of negative 24 pixels and then a display of block, followed by a width and a height set to 48 pixels, and a transform scale set to 0.2, followed by a background of black and a border radius of 
Next, we're going to go ahead and add the cursor media class with a display of block and a width and a height of 350 pixels, followed by an overflow of hidden and a border radius of 100%. Add the transform scale set to zero with a margin of negative 175 pixels for the top and the left, followed by a position relative. Let's go ahead and tackle the video now. Set the height to 350 pixels followed by a left of 50% and a transform translate X of negative 50% to center it and then a position of absolute. Go ahead and save that. And if we preview, we could see that the cursor is now in the top left corner. Doesn't have any special effects, but we'll get to that when we start coding out the JavaScript. That's gonna do it for the HTML and CSS for our cursor. Up next, we're going to use JavaScript to allow the cursor to follow wherever our mouse position is and add some easing to it. Now we're ready to write some JavaScript. Go ahead and create a new file in the JS folder called cursor.js. And at the very top, let's go ahead and import gsap from gsap. We're also going to need to import our utilities functions, lerp, get mouse position, and get siblings. Now what we wanna do is grab the mouse position and set it to our own mouse state. We can then create our own state by writing a mouse object, setting the X and the Y to zero. We'll also add an event listener to our window of mouse move and we'll pass in an event which will set mouse to the get mouse position. This get mouse position is coming from our utilities function, which can be found here, which is simply returning the position of X and Y of wherever our mouse is located on the window. Next, we want to create a cursor class. So we'll write export default class cursor with a constructor inside, and the constructor is going to have a parameter of L, which will represent the cursor. The first variable we'll create is this.cursor, which is set to L. And if we go back to index.js, we can get rid of this console log, hey there, cutie. And we can import cursor from the top. And now we can initiate a new cursor. So we'll set const cursor is set to new cursor. And the parameter we're passing in is the cursor DOM element. So document.querySelector.cursor, meaning when we jump into our cursor.js, this L parameter will be the cursor or the HTML cursor. We can test this out by writing console.log this.cursor. And if we take a look at our console, we'll see that we're returning the HTML of the cursor element, which is located in the top left corner. We can get rid of this console log now. And what we wanna do is set the style of our cursor's opacity to zero. This way it doesn't show the user that it's located in the top left. Then we need to grab some HTML elements. First, we're grabbing the items, which is document.querySelector all hero inner link item, which will grab each individual item of the websites, the apps, as well as the branding. This dot hero is grabbing the query selector of the class name hero inner. And then this dot bounds is grabbing the client rect of the cursor. Turns out we actually don't need this dot bounds or this dot hero. So just ignore writing those because we never use them. And then finally, we want to set the cursor configurations. The cursor configuration is going to be an object specifically for the X and the Y, which will house the previous, the current, and the amount. This is specific to our linear interpolation function, which we'll get to here in a sec. Then we need to define the mouse move function. And inside on mouse move function, what we're going to do is assign the cursor configs of X's previous to the same value that the x configs.current will have, which will have the value of the mouse.x. So wherever the mouse moves, the x value is going to be assigned to the current, which will then also be assigned to the previous. We also want to do the exact same thing that we did for the x value to the y value, where we're taking current, which is assigned to the y, but also assigned to previous. Now there is a typo where I take previous and assign previous twice, but that shouldn't really affect too much. I will go back and fix that. Just make sure it's the exact same as the current. Next, we are going to set the opacity of the cursor to one. And we do that by setting gsap.2, passing in this.cursor. And then the gsap configs that we pass are duration of one, ease power three dot ease out, and setting the opacity to one. Next, let's create some room because we are going to need to run our request animation frame. 
Now to best describe what a request animation frame is, I'll have some examples on the screen right now, as well as I'll tell you about the exact definitions. So this method tells the browser that you wish to perform an animation and requests that the browser calls a specified function to update an animation before the next repaint. The method takes a callback as an argument to be invoked before the repaint. So to get this working, what we're going to do is request animation frame and the callback function we are running is this dot render. Now this dot render or the render function isn't yet defined, but we'll do that now. We'll scroll down a bit and then create a render function. We won't pass anything just yet, but we'll get to that here in a sec. As always, we'll need to write a cleanup function where we remove mouse move when it isn't needed anymore. So we'll go ahead and add window.remove event listener, mouse move, and we'll remove the this dot on mouse move event function. Now we have removed the on mouse move event function when we're not needing it anymore, but we never assigned it. So outside of the function, let's go ahead and assign this function to our window. What we could do is we will write window.add event listener, mouse move, and then pass the on mouse move event function. Inside the render, what we're going to do is set the cursor configs of X is current to mouse.x. And then we'll do the exact same thing to the Y, setting the Y's current to mouse.y. If you could remember going back to the constructor, we kind of set the initial values. And then here in the render, it's where it's going to be updating those values. Next, we need to create our lerp function, the linear interpolation. So what we need to do here is we need to assign the so what we need to do here is create a for loop where it's taking key as X and Y from the cursor configs. As we're looping through the cursor configs and extracting the key of X and Y, we're going to need to run a linear interpolation function. And if you don't know what that is, I'll have examples here on the screen of different outputs that a linear interpolation does, as well as an article below, which I truly adored that gave terrific explanations when it comes to these animation functions, such as lerp, clamp, inverse lerp, and range. But essentially, lerp returns the value between two numbers at a specified decimal point. A lerp function is awesome because it does very complex math for us. So if I wanted to know what number is 35% between 56 and 132, I would pass 56 in my first parameter and 132 in my second parameter, and then the percentage in the third parameter. Now this would be very tricky math, but with a lerp function, it makes it very easy for us. Other examples include the following. So if I had 20 and 80, and I wanted to know what 50% was between both 20 and 80, I would pass 0.5 in the third parameter, which will return 40. Now this is very easy to do when it comes to working with whole numbers and percentages that are equivalent to halves, because you're simply just cutting it in half, but it gets complicated when you need percentages that aren't necessarily that easy to divide. So now that we have a better understanding of what a lerp function does, what we'll need to do next is set the return value of our lerp function to the x and the y's previous in the cursor configs. So we have this dot cursor configs passing in the key that will be x and y dot previous is equivalent to a lerp function, which will then pass the parameters of the previous for the first parameter the current for the second parameter, and then the amount will represent that 0.2 percentage that we defined as its initial. So next, what we're going to do is update that HTML cursor we built with its X and Y values being equivalent to the cursor config's previous value. So we'll write this cursor.style.transform, and then in here we'll write some CSS. Make sure you use template literals so that we can add the curly brackets and add the JavaScript values of the previous. So translate X will take the cursor configs of X previous and translate Y will take the cursor configs of Y previous. Be sure to add the PX, which is pixels inside the translate X and translate Y parentheses. Finally, we're then going to need to write our request animation frame method. And as its argument, we'll give it a function that runs this dot render. Go ahead and save your file and let's preview. So now you can see our cute little cursor following us around with a very nice easing to it. This easing is coming from the amount that we assigned of that point to value and adding it to the linear interpolation function. It's kind of updating the previous position of the mouse that's following us around 
we can always change sort of the inertia or sort of the friction so that we can make it follow us a lot quicker. And I'll show you how to do that here. We can switch the amount of the X and the Y to 0.5. This makes the custom cursor follow or snap to the mouse a lot quicker. If we wanted to see how it looks like when it's 0.8, you could see that now it's much faster than it was against 0.5 and the 0.2 value. I personally don't really like this effect. I like it being very smooth, uh, very seamless. And so 0.2 really is that magic number. So that marks the completion of step two. Now we need to move on to step three to add that media cursor effect for when we hover on the different elements, our media cursor scales up and it reveals the video. Okay, so I am in my cursor JS right now and I'm taking a look at the this.item element, which is the hero items. What I wanna do is I wanna scroll down and create some room for our scale function. We'll call it on scale mouse. And inside on scale mouse, we'll target this.item dot for each so that we could target each individual item. And then I'll pass an arrow function with a link parameter. And targeting each link, I'll add an event listener for mouse enter for when we hover onto the link items. And in here, we want to run a GSAP animation of targeting the cursor and we can target the cursor by writing this.cursor.children with the array of zero for the index. Then we'll pass the duration of 0.6, a scale factor of 0.8 and a power three of ease out. We then need to execute this on scale mouse. So scrolling to the top and inside this dot on mouse move event function, let's go ahead and run this dot on scale mouse. Taking a look at the preview, now when we hover on any of these elements, our scale for the cursor media scales up, like so. It doesn't scale back down just yet, but we will get to that in a sec. So refreshing the page, it's resetting the cursor media scale, and then every time I hover on any of these links, it will scale up. Going back in the project, let's go ahead and scroll down a bit. And what I want to do is I want to take this GSAP animation and create its own function. Because we are using this GSAP animation several times, let's go ahead and create its own function so that we can just reuse this function several times rather than needing to write the GSAP animation. I'll go ahead and create a scale animation function. I'll copy and paste exactly what I have for the GSAP animation in the scale animation function. And then as parameters for the scale animation function, I will pass L for the element and amount for the amount regarding the scale. I'll go ahead and plug those into the GSAP animation. And then up at the top where we had the original animation ran, I will delete everything there. And then what I'll do is I'll type this.scale animation. And as arguments, what I'll pass is L for the this.cursor.children with the zero index. And then for the second argument, it will take a 0.8 for the amount, 0.8 being the scale factor. Next, we wanna scale down the cursor when we hover off. Go ahead and add a link.add event listener of mouse leave, and then pass the scale animation function with the same element. However, for the amount, the second argument, we're going to give it a zero rather than a 0.8. And so now when we hover on the different elements, our media cursor scales up. And when we hover off, our media cursor scales back down to zero and revealing the original cursor, that small little black dot. Let's go ahead and go back in the project. And now we'll want to add two more event listeners. The first one we're adding is when we hover on the actual tag or label, we want to expand the cursor to a scale factor of 1.2. Go ahead and write link.children with an index of one and add an event listener of mouse enter. Then we're going to write this.scale animation, the same element of the cursor children zero, which is the cursor of the media. And then the factor we're passing in or the amount is going to be 1.2. Then when we hover off the label, same thing, we'll do link.children with the first index or the index of one. We'll add an event listener of mouse leave and we'll scale it back down to an amount of 0.8. And if we preview, you can see when we hover on top of the labels, our cursor scales to 0.8. And then when we hover on the labels exactly, like the A tags or the span tags, our cursor then expands to 1.2. Scaling off of it, we go back to 0.8. And then scaling off the entire div, we go back to 0. One thing I want to talk about is when we first load the page and we're already hovered on the div or the element, 
the cursor media doesn't detect that we're already on it because we're using a mouse enter. So we haven't actually entered, we just kind of loaded the page while being on it. What we could do to fix this issue is let's create some room inside the for each method and write an if statement. We'll use the matches JavaScript method to check if the link has a hover selector on it. If it does, then we'll run the scale animation with the amount of 0.8 as a scale factor. Back in our project, we could see that when we're already hovered on branding apps or websites and we refresh the page, the if statement is triggered as a true statement which then means it will run the scale factor animation so that we don't need to enter the element again to trigger that animation. So that marks the completion of step three where we finished up the scale animation. Now what we wanna focus on is when we change between the different links, we want to update the video to display the correct one corresponding to whichever one we hovered on, AKA um, that sounded like me rambling, but if we hover on websites, we wanna show the websites video. If we hover on branding, show the branding video, etc. Let's go back in our project and now we can start working on changing the video depending on which element we've hovered on. I've went ahead and scrolled down and created a new function called set video and I'm passing L as a parameter. What this function will do is it's going to grab the data video source and make sure it matches with the videos that should be displayed inside the cursor. First things first is we need to grab the attribute of data video source from whichever element we hovered on. Each element we hover on, such as the website, apps, and branding, has a data video source attribute that we need to grab. Next, we need to determine which video matches the element we hovered on. And we do that by creating a video variable and then the document.query selector and passing in ID with source being the data video source attribute that we already have. And the last variable we create is a siblings variable, which would run get siblings function from our utilities. And the argument we'll pass is video. If we take a look at our index HTML and scroll to the top towards our hero link items, here we need to add the data video source attribute to each link item. The first link item of websites will receive a video source of websites. The second one will receive a video source of apps. And the third one, you guessed it, will receive a video source of branding. Go ahead and save this and jump back into Cursor.js and you can see now that every time we grab the data video source, we're grabbing the specific element, passing it to videos, then grabbing the siblings, passing the video argument to siblings. To test this out, let's go ahead and console log what source and siblings will represent. To run this function, scroll to the top to where you see on scale mouse function. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to run this dot set video passing in link as an argument inside the if statement, as well as inside the first mouse enter event listener. Let's take a preview now. And we can see that when we hover on the different elements, it first returns us whichever item we hovered on. And then it also returns the other two siblings. So if we hover on branding, the siblings are apps and websites. If we hover on websites, the siblings are apps and branding and vice versa. Let's go ahead and jump back into our project and scroll back down to the set video function. Get rid of the two console logs. And what we'll do next is have an if statement checks if the video ID matches the source. If we go to index.html, you can see all the videos do have an ID. So if video ID is equal to source, We'll then run a GSAP animation where we'll set the Z index to a four and opacity to one. And then for each sibling, we'll do a siblings that for each passing in I as a parameter, we'll pass GSAP dot set and then I being the element of Z index to one and opacity to zero. Let's take a preview now. And you can see when we hover on apps, we have the apps video, branding gives us the branding video and websites gives us the websites video. And every time we switch between each one, depending on whichever one we switch to, it will then check to see that if the attribute matches the video source ID, it will then update the Z index and the opacity of the videos. So we're almost done, but we've got step five and step six. In step five, what we're going to do is create that exclusion effect so that when we hover on the text, the media blend or the mix blend mode creates this really neat effect between the video and the text. Now let's go back to our project. And what we want to do now is create that exclusion effect for when we hover on the cursor and the text. Go ahead and jump into your cursor SAS and create a media blend class that is attached to the cursor. We can do that by having ampersand.mediablend. 
go ahead and add a ZNX of 100, a mix blend mode of exclusion. And then inside the media blend, we're going to add a cursor media class. And what cursor media class is going to receive is a filter with invert one. Go ahead and clean up the extra space and save the file. Go back to cursor.js and what we'll want to do is we we'll want to scroll to the top to where we add the event listener of mouse enter for when we hover on the tags. And here we'll want to do the following. We want to do this.cursor.classlist add and we'll add the class of media blend. This will add the class of media blend to our cursor. And then we want to remove the class of media blend for when we hover off or mouse leave for the link. So now when we hover on branding, you can see it as that media blend class and it adds that exclusion effect that we're looking for between the video and the text itself, which creates a very neat effect and adds a lot of depth to our overall design and animation. Now the last thing we're going to cover is adding a very simple page reveal. This one is really good because it prevents our website from having that dreaded white flash that everybody hates and it creates a very smooth transition with an opacity from 0 to 1. Now back in our project, the very last thing we're going to cover is adding an intro animation for when the website loads. It's going to be a very simple opacity effect, so go ahead and import GSAP off the top and then create some room to create a variable for the document.query selector of body. And then inside the window.onload, we'll add body.classlist.remove loading. This will remove a class of loading from our body, which we don't have just yet. So go to index.html and add a class of loading. Go back into index.js and we'll do a gsap.from selecting body and we'll select the opacity of 0, duration of 1, and ease to power3.ease in out. Now for the loading class, we haven't defined that. So jump to style.scss and then just add a dot loading and then add visibility to hidden. Go ahead and save this. And what should happen now is that the entire document shouldn't be visible. So it doesn't give you that flash until everything or the window has loaded. Once the window has loaded, we'll set the body to remove the classless of loading, removing that visibility hidden. And then everything would appear as well as animate from a opacity of zero at GSAP to an opacity of one, creating a very smooth entrance. Well, that's going to do it for me. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely one of my favorite videos that I have made. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care of yourselves out there and have a wonderful day.